Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys coming by the channel to hang with me a little bit on the video. Really appreciate that. And guys, today we're going to be talking about swimming a plastic worm in the summertime of the year. This technique, the one of the, well, the second biggest stringer fish I've ever caught in a tournament came swimming a plastic worm in the summertime. It's a great way to catch big ones. So we're going to give you guys some good advice on how to set the rig up, the baits you need and the techniques and the areas you need to fish them in in today's video. I'm also, guys, a quick reminder that SolarBat extended the uh, Independence Day sale on my SolarBat RB2 and RB3 series sunglasses. If you guys are interested in getting a pair right now, you can get them at 30% off all during the month of July. And if you order a second pair, you get that second pair at 60% off. So it's a really good deal. So I'll put that link in the description along with my Fish the Moment Lake Map breakdown link. So really appreciate that. Okay guys, the bit, so I'll tell you a little quick story about this. The second biggest stringer fish I've ever caught in a tournament before, it was, I was fishing a Central Pro-Am tournament up at Truman Lake and it was a July tournament. And I caught a, it was 20, I think it was 25 pounds, seven ounces the second day of the tournament. And I was swimming a big, big worm. At the time it was a 10 inch zoom worm. Uh, this is the old monster, or the old monster magnum I'm gonna talk about in today's video. But um, that's one example, and I've caught a bunch of big ones in other situations in the summer, so we're gonna go over that. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the, how to set it up, <clears throat> the best worms for it, and then we're gonna talk about the type of areas that it works best in. So guys, here's my favorite worm setup right here. This is the Zoom Old Monster Magnum. It's a 12 inch, inch, 12 inch long worm. That's bigger than the Old Monster you know, Zoom worm. Big fat worm, guys, this is what you want. I like a 12 inch worm in the summertime. 10 inch, 10 inch one will work okay, but you get more bites and bigger bites on a 12 inch worm, especially in the month of July and August and early September. And then what you wanna do for the next setup is you gotta couple it up with a fairly light weight. And I like to use a 3 16 as my favorite, sometimes an eighth, but I never hardly ever go over 3 16 because if you go over a 3 16 ounce, you have to reel the bait too fast to keep it in the water column right. So a 3 16 you know, keeps that bait there nice. And then I use a straight shank, 3 aught Gamagatsu G Finesse uh, uh, hook there. You don't want to use an EWG or an offset. You want to use a straight shank. And I'll have all this stuff linked to my Tackle Warehouse link, guys. If you want to get set up with all this, I'll put everything in there so you guys can order it from there. So. That's the setup, usually coupled up with 17 to 20 pound test Seaguar and Vizx line. Um, colors vary, guys. My, my two favorite is either some type of a blue or red bug like this, but any type of a darker color works pretty good, especially if you got flake in it. So the way that you wanna rig this, guys, first of all, with the straight shank hook, is you, you don't wanna come through the middle of the worm like most people do. We've talked about this. I actually did a video on the fishing teacher earlier today about it, but don't rig your bait like that on a big worm you got too much plastic to penetrate there. Make sure when you when you put it through there that you just come through the side, just barely barely skin hook it in the side of the worm like that. That way when you set the hook on that thing, the hook just comes out real easy, which is really critical. And also, don't go above a three-yacht hook. The, this three-yacht Gamagatsu uh, G Finesse, it's a little bit larger than what most three-yacht hooks are, but it's really sharp and really stiff and uh, you just get better hook penetration with a smaller hook. So this is the way that, this is the way the bait looks when, when you finally get it set up like that. It's just a nice little straight worm set up like that. Okay, now, once you get that set up, which is critical, the, the sorry about that guys, worm got caught around the camera stand there. Once you get that set up, which is real critical, you know, to set it up right, using the right color and the right worm, next thing you have to do is you gotta fish it in the right areas. Now this is what's really critical because every lake is not set up for it, but it seems like in most lakes, there's at least some places that you can do that. Now, my favorite summertime structure to do this in is swimming this big worm next to, to boat docks, floating boat docks that are in off-colored water. If you've got boat docks that have water visibility of say, you know, anywhere between a foot to three foot, you can take that big worm, you can cast it along the edge of the docks and along the front and just slowly reel it, you know, underneath the floats there. That's a really good way to catch them. The other good way to catch them is if you have standing timber in a lake, but a lot of lakes don't have standing timber anymore. But if you do have a lake that has standing timber in it, get along the edge of a creek channel, like in a major creek, and throw that worm out there in that standing timber. And, and depending upon the water visibility, 
count it down to anywhere between two to 10 foot below. If the water visibility is dirty, just throw it out there and start reeling it Im immediately. If it's cleaner water, let it sink down a little bit, but try to reel it right along that creek channel edge and close to the timbers, you can get it. That's another good way to catch them. Another good way to catch them, guys, if you have a lake that has submergent timber, say say the lake that you fish has the, it's older and the timber's rotted out a little bit, same type of deal. Find that submerged timber along those creek channel edges, look at them, look for them on your 2D sonar, throw that big worm out there and let it sink down to the top of that timber where you see the tops are. Sometimes it can be 10, 15, 20 foot. Again, just slowly reel it in and you, and you don't have to put any action on it. All you have to do is just use a slow medium retrieve, no stop and go, anything like that. I usually like to keep my rod tip at about 10 or 11 o'clock because I can control the depth better. And that's another good way to catch them. Also, if you have submergent grass beds, if you guys have lakes that have submergent hydrilla or milfoil, swimming that worm over the top of that hydrilla and milfoil is a really good way. And then finally, one of my favorite ways to fish them is if you are graphing out off of like main lake or secondary points and you can find some type of brush out there, like people have planted brush piles, try swimming that worm in and around those deeper brush piles. That's a really good way to catch them. The main thing about it is in the summertime of the year, the mood and the personality of the fish, for whatever reason, it's really conducive to swimming that worm. It's like this, most people discovered this by accident. Like they were working their worm out there traditionally, like most people work a worm. And then, then they started to reel it in to make another cast and a fish bit it. And that's how the swimming worm technique developed. And another thing about it, what I found out is don't, get don't get too um concerned about the water clarity because i have literally caught them guys in every visibility that you can think of i remember we were i was fishing up at truman lake one time up in the upper grand river and the water was mud up there i mean literally mud it was like two inches of visibility and i caught like three five pounders that day swimming that big worm just un, about three or four inches underneath the surface next to the stumps and the timber there and then also I've caught them down at Tabor Rock Lake where you got 10 foot of visibility, fishing them over the deeper, you know, submergent timber out there. So don't let the water visibility, you know, fool you. It'll work in about any water visibility that you can, but just get creative with it. You know, if, if you're, say for example, if you're fishing down a, a row of, of, you know, a bank that's got some lay down trees on it, instead of flipping that worm, like pitching and flipping like you normally would by pitching and flipping in the middle of the limbs, Try swimming that worm along the outside of it. Or if you see a stump, instead of pitching that worm and letting it hit the bottom, try swimming it, you know, just under the water next to that stump. Sometimes those bass want that horizontal presentation in the summer, and they want that horizontal presentation from a silent lure. Because that's one of the big advantages why this thing catches so many big ones, is it doesn't telegraph itself. It's not like a, a spinnerbait or a chatterbait or a crankbait coming past a stump. It's a, it's, a, it's a bait that does not give away itself. It's quiet, yet this, this place is some water. It's got a little bit of vibration with that tail. And those big fish really like it in the summertime. So just experiment, guys. Just, you know, next time you're fishing out there and you're catching a few fish, put you on one of those big worms. Try swimming it around the cover you're fishing and see what happens. But anyway, guys, I'll link everything in the description of this video if you guys want to get set up with that. And uh, we'll check in later. See y'all.